Anytime I'm trying a new mixture of a tea, I'll record it on my phone uh, in parts. So for example, one part nettle, one part peppermint, one part lemon balm, one part rooibos, something like that. And then once I've had a chance to sip through the tea, I'll decide if I like it and then maybe adjust the quantities for next time I make the recipe. So I'm going to try a new one today and record it on my phone. And I think I'm going to make something like one part nettle, one part peppermint, because mint is a really good flavor to combine with nettle just to give it a little bit of good tasting minty flavor instead of that overwhelming earthy base, which nettle tastes quite earthy. So I'm going to do one part nettle, one part peppermint, one part lemon balm, I just love lemon balm, and one part marigold and maybe a little bit of licorice, so maybe not a full part, maybe half or a quarter of that. But we'll see what that tastes like. so good that sometimes I'm like, well, maybe I'll double up on what I'm going with. Uh, not today. Let's try this recipe. So I buy these packs from our natural food store, which we buy a lot of our grocery items from them as well. What did I say? Licorice. You can buy licorice in cut, uh, the roots that are cut and dried, or you can buy it in a powder. If you're going to use the powder, just use a little bit less because it would be much more concentrated than the dried and cut. Now the nice part about measuring in parts is that you can adjust it for how much you're making. So I usually make this whole teapot full. So I found that measuring my parts in one teaspoon gives me a strong enough flavor that I really enjoy. But if you were just going to make one cup of tea, maybe you want to use half a teaspoon as your part and um, change your quantities according to that. So I'm going to let this kettle boil and then I'll come back and steep these ingredients for a little while, maybe a couple of minutes and then try this tea. And I should use this opportunity to quickly tell you about the benefits of nettle tea. Now there's so many, you can just do a simple Google search and lots of opinions and lists of vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and amino acids, is that what it's called? Yeah, amino acids will come up and so I think there's lots of studies figuring out all of the benefits, but I'm going to read you a simple list that I have read in my studies, and maybe you can hear if there's something in here that interests you. So nettle leaf has antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, it's good for allergies, urination, inflammation, joint pain, muscle spasms, bacterial infections, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin K, iron, selenium, zinc, magnesium, fatty acids, good for arthritis, anemia, and then also it has a better amino acid profile than most leafy vegetables. So that's a whole big list, including two to three times more protein than what wheat or barley would give you. Wow. So it's jam-packed with a lot of good stuff. And I can attest to the fact that if I've had a cup of nettle tea in the morning, I can feel that my brain is sharper. I haven't really heard many people say that, but that's just my experience. 
Now if you're wondering where you can find this nettle leaf tea, it's pretty much all over North America. I don't know about the rest of the world, but you can find it sort of alongside or nearby rivers or streams or big bodies of water because it likes to grow in a damp condition somewhere, either in full sun to partly shady. And when you find it, it'll usually be in a big bunch, uh, or shall I say, spread over a large area because it, yeah, it sort of takes over once it gets going. Now when you're picking, you want to be really careful about how you are picking. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves because the leaves do have a stinging little hairs, hence its name, stinging nettle leaf which I just call nettle for short. So you want to be really careful not to get that on your skin because it can make your skin really break out and be itchy for a long time. It's, it's not a good feeling. I've seen people have it and sure there are things that can treat it, but trust me, don't let it touch any part of your skin. And it's strange that something that can be so dangerous to the touch could be so healthy for you to be consuming. Um, but you can't consume it raw like this. You either have to cook it or dry it and use it in tea. And tea is just the quickest way to get those benefits in if you're not going to, you know, cook with it and make a soup or some kind of stew, stir fry. However you would use any kind of other leafy greens, you would cook it in the same way. Um, but if you want the benefits really quickly, just make a simple tea. I also read that the stems are good for many other things. People have used it to make paper or ropes and nets for fishing. And when it's processed, it can be used as kind of a linen-like cloth. So one plant, multiple uses, very many benefits that are good for you. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see many more people harvesting that leaf in the coming years. Because I see a lot of people turning back to kind of the earthy nature providing for us. <laughs> kind of mindset instead of just um, consuming what is easy and luxurious to go get from the grocery store. Now you'll know how to harvest and preserve and make some nettle tea. Okay, I'll add that to my list. So 
that was one part nettle, one part lemon balm, one part peppermint, one part marigold, and a quarter part licorice, something like that. Mmm, yum. Okay, I'll check back in when I make some more. You should probably not have too much, you know, just like anything, you can have stuff for health benefits, but don't overdo it. Uh, we're not drinking metal tea all day long. I don't know if that would be bad for you, but I'm in the class of don't overdo anything. Just, you know, have a sensible amount. So maybe I'll make some more later. I'll try a new recipe.